Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 18, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So Supergirl is finally back, she's finally returned, and I'm very excited to talk about this. I actually kind of forgot that Supergirl was on this week, I thought it was next week for some reason, but it was a nice surprise, and... This was a very good episode. It was a great return. I really, really enjoyed this episode. We're going to be breaking it down bit by bit. So this was crime and punishment. All right. So the first bit I want to talk about, and like I normally do with these reviews, if you're new, we don't really go through it chronologically. So I'm just going bit by bit, which bits I want to talk about first. All right. So at first, we start off the episode, Supergirl is with Alex, she's with Lena, and so they still don't know why everyone believes that Supergirl did it, because obviously they know Supergirl didn't do it, she wouldn't do that, and they checked about Bizarro, that was a nice reference, back to obviously really early on in season 1, and so it's not Bizarro, they definitely found that out, but they are still confused as to who it is, obviously we know it's Red Daughter, Lex knows it's Red Daughter, even Eve knows it's Red Daughter, so they all know, but right now it's under wraps, and they're sort of questioning, is it Bizarro? Who is it? Who is this imposter? Because they have no idea, but that's how the episode starts off. Then we get Supergirl and Lena, as they come up with the idea to actually go to Lex's prison, and go into his cell, essentially, to find out what they can about where he is right now. And so they confront the warden, and due to Lex Luthor actually working with him, we saw him in a prior episode, he's actually in the end killed in this episode by Otis Graves, so it all sort of links back into that Red Daughter origin episode, but also Lex's origin episode as well. And so they are in Lex's cell for a predominant part of the episode, where they find Lex's diaries, Lena looks through, and I really actually like the work that they did between Supergirl and Lena, although it wasn't very big, it was just a small part of the episode that sort of went on throughout, and Supergirl did a lot of the stuff by herself, but I thought it worked when they were together in the prison, and I thought it was interesting. But let's move on to the next bit, so Supergirl goes around slyly asking for the help from this peeping Tom, from the guy that essentially is across from where Lex used to stay, so he knows a lot of stuff, and that was probably my favourite scene in the episode, when Supergirl sort of just slides up to the door, and she's like, so, tell me about Lex, and she just goes on this sort of ramble, and he sort of spins it back on her, but I just thought the way she was sort of smirking and doing it, it was really, really great, I loved that scene, and so, Thingy returns, by Thingy, I mean Otis Graves, so, again, like I've said many times, not the biggest fan of him, I think he's been fine since he returned, but this is definitely his best episode. He sort of wasn't too big of a character, but when he was around, he was pretty good, and I loved some of the references, which we'll talk about in a second that he does, but yeah, he returns and this is inside this prison, and at one point there is a prison riot, so Supergirl fights in this prison break, and oh my god was it so cool. The first scene where they all sort of charge at her and she takes them down one by one and it's so casual like, it's amazing. And it was so good, it sort of reminded me of some of the fight scenes in Arrow but it was a bit more elegant in how it was shot because it was very smooth and you saw how easy it was for her because none of them have powers. She was just taking them left and right and I really really like that scene, that was along with that sort of smirky Supergirl scene with the peeping Tom type character who's Steve, that's his name. Those were my favourite scenes definitely of the episode and I really, really liked them, like they were really good. Alright, so then we move on to another fight scene just later after that fight, so Supergirl comes face to face with Otis and they fight each other and so there's the army outside or whatever they call them and they're here to kill Supergirl under the president's order and so there is a brilliant fight between both Otis and Supergirl, like he throws a thing at the boxing ring and it rings and it was just really neat and like I said, I thought the fighting was a lot better than normal. It was really well shot this episode, so I was very impressed by the fight scenes especially and so his kryptonite gets to her and he goes and says, here's Otis and that is a massive 
massive point in the episode where I was like, yes, come on, you're fully going into this. So that was a Shining reference to when Jack Torrance in The Shining in Stanley Kubrick's film goes, here's Johnny. And that is one of my favorite films of all time. So that gave me great pleasure watching that bit. So I really liked that. But most significantly, a great fight scene. And I loved how it ended and how Kara is just hiding in plain sight being like, oh, I'm a reporter. And Otis is like, yeah, I don't really trust the media. And he walks off. And I, it's obviously quite funny that no one ever notices that Kara is Supergirl. But anyway, that was a great way to end that fight because... You could see the kryptonite hurting her hands just behind and she was hiding it and i really just like that switcheroo that they did and so we see the peeping tom character steve actually working with kara as he is a massive fan he really has a soft side he's not just this bad side that he shows when he's in front of supergirl because everyone right now is afraid of supergirl so that was a big point in this episode and so I really, really liked it when he made that switch when he was around Kara. And that leads to the end of the episode where, in fact, he actually returns and Kara returns to the prison and they talk together. And he gives her some information about a flash drive that's going to lead Lena and Supergirl, as we know from the synopsis, to Kaznia. That is their lead for next episode, maybe confronting Red Daughter for the very first time. So... It was just such a great way to actually use this character to show these two sides to him and how especially criminals don't really trust Supergirl but you know he's a reporter he's a writer himself or he is an aspiring writer in the prison so he finds a connection and I thought it was just a really great part of the episode and also the ending just it was so different from the normal Supergirl endings the ending was really really great and that's when Kara drops the line maybe even mightier than a cape so i just really thought the dialogue was really on point this episode i thought this episode was really really well written and i was just really impressed and that ending really really worked when they were talking together she was being her reporter self and she was talking to him and they just ended the episode like that it was just a nice ending really appreciated that all right so we get this various points in the episode we get a Lena and Lex flashback so it's nice seeing at least a version of Lex he's definitely been recast because he's older in this version and I think Lena may have been recast when she was younger but I'm not entirely sure about that so Lena finds a secret tunnel in this episode from which we saw prior when Lex was actually in the prison cell he was drawing on the wall and it was all in her in his diary sorry that it all sort of linked up and she was able to find out his puzzle so he wants her to come to her, him essentially sometime later in the season and so when she finds this tunnel they are both able to get away when the military actually come and they're like you know what's going on and supergirl has to break out of the secret lab that lex has at the back of the prison and so Otis talks to Lex Luthor, that was a nice addition, so just confirming yes, Lex is still around, and he blows up, so that was obviously him failing to get Supergirl and failing to do that, so that was his punishment to blow up and get fixed back up again by Eve at the end of the episode, so that was kind of funny. And so as we head towards the end of the episode, we actually got Supergirl, Alex and Lena together, and Supergirl talks about how she's going to lay low, and... I just thought it was a really great way to wrap up the end of the episode with her actually revealing she can see that Supergirl right now is not a figure that she needs to be because a lot of people are fearing her right now due to what she supposedly did to the White House. So that's implanted at many points in the episode. And yeah, so Otis is back and he's back alive and that's going to come back to obviously bite Supergirl in the next few episodes. And so... As we go on and we actually go back to the start of the episode so just a little point about what I wasn't so hot on the episode was the Agent Liberty stuff as I said I've been getting a bit bored of him recently but I thought this episode's only weak points was actually Agent Liberty because it was just him sort of confronting people and you know going forth to the DEO to try and capture Supergirl and he fails and so we had like various dreams of actually Brainy actually getting strung up by him essentially and so at the start of the episode we get these really annoying 
citizens arrest people like the with the gun and they're like shooting and they have some really really cheesy cringy dialogue so that was like the only point in the episode where i was like okay the writing here not very well thought out but it was such a small part that i sort of just forgot about it towards the end of the episode but yeah the agent liberty stuff didn't really work especially at the end of the episode when the president is back and you know i'm really bored of the president i think he's just really bland and he has no real purpose in the series right now so he actually says you can deputize the children of liberty and that scene was probably one of the worst scenes in the episode because it was just so bland and meaningless in the actor's performance because he just turns around and is like deputize the children of liberty that's been something that he's been holding back on and then it's just like a weird reveal like, yeah i just didn't like that part of the episode that was like the only part like i said just at the start with the people trying to do the citizens arrest with a fucking gun like hmm that was the only bit but that's just such a small bit that i actually forgot and just looking back at my notes i was like oh yeah i didn't really like that so that's just a little part so let me know if you like that or you didn't like that in the episode or not or am i sort of going crazy let me know all right so the other part of the episode is just towards the end of this video we're going to talk about james and kelly so we see kelly return and james he's sorting out his ptsd his trauma he goes to a doctor and essentially in this episode he's able to find out some sort of meditation so he can actually overcome his PTSD and he finds out that his powers are actually seeping through in him. He has this really great moment in this episode where he essentially has this kind of superpower moment where he's kind of a bit like Supergo. He's able to see from ages away and I thought it was just so well put together. I really really liked the way they shot it. It was really kind of expressionistic and actually challenging the sort of norms of shooting a superhero TV show and yeah I just really appreciated that scene. I thought it was really good and Kelly and James you know they were such a small part in the episode but I thought they were good in their scenes. I didn't think that you know it weighed down on the episode because I'm like eh, I don't know about the PTSD stuff before this episode I'm still not sure about the PTSD stuff I just don't want them to sort of drag it on too long but I thought the way they sort of introduced the idea of him having powers was really good in this episode and so just as we head towards the end of the episode and the end of this review let's talk about Alex and Kelly so they meet up for some advice and I don't know if it's just me, and I know this has been a theory going around online, so obviously it's implanted in my head already, but there was a connection in that scene, and that was the sort of connection that you got when you met Alex and Maggie for the first time, and especially for me, when I saw Kara and Monel for the first time, but with, you know, if you remember the couch scene when Monel is injured, he looks at Kara, he talks to James and Wynn, and he's like, is Kara taken? And there is just that slight connection in the visual that gives you that sort of hint. And I got that same connection between the last two shots in that scene with Alex and Kelly with the close-ups and the use of the blur and what's in focus and what's not. And I felt that. And I am looking forward to that. Hopefully that happens. But the thing is, obviously I'm still not over Alex and Maggie, but that felt real that moment. So I think... I'm open. I'm open. We'll see. We'll see if that actually happens or, you know, are we going crazy sort of speculating about this stuff? I don't know. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and if you did enjoy this episode, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, subscribe, turn on notifications if you are new and follow me on Twitter at the DC TV show. Also, Instagram to stay up to date with me. So I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.